Jesus. You know the enemy will sometimes, um, I'm not saying that he will not right now, I'm kind of the enemy will. The enemy will cause, uh, he will try to blind your eyes. He will try to move you out of the presence of God. He will try to shut your mouth. He will try to remove you from where the Holy Spirit is moving. You know, look, I don't want to make a big look. Sometimes people, look, if we're not careful, we will come up with every excuse in the rule book not to be in the house. That's right. Oh, yeah. I'm not here to talk about other people, but I'm just saying, somebody this morning, their alarm wasn't working right on their body. Now, I'm not trying to talk about nobody. I'm not going to say no name. But they said, I'm going to tell you, I want to be in the house of the Lord. That's what they told the tech that was reading it on the other end. And something's wrong with our monitor because it's, that ain't her fault. <laughs> She can. She has a choice. She can either believe God that she's supposed to be in the house of God, or she can let this malfunctioning piece of equipment that is not really saying that her heart's bad. It's not charged up enough, so we're scared now. If you leave your premises or something, excuse me. Oh, I'm going to disconnect this thing, and that's what the Lord says. Not the pastor. You know, listen to the pastor. Listen to the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to get myself. In a place where the Holy Spirit can bring healing and minister and deliverance. Yes. Why? Because he's already shown himself. Yes. And I'm more, I'm more worried about lining up with him than you, buddy. Oh, yeah, I just said it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Praise God. We're doing something a little bit different today. And look, are y'all okay if the camera sometimes stands in the back of the room? Are y'all going to be okay with that? Or, yeah, okay, cool. So look, we're doing something a little bit different today. We're going to put the <coughs> microphones in the back because uh, Rich told me they need to be towards the back of the sanctuary. So they don't cause a bunch of racket. Um, cause a bunch of uh, trouble, right, with squealing and squeaking and speakers. We don't want that. That would definitely breathe the Holy Spirit. But I will tell you that the Holy Spirit knows how to return. Amen. <laughs> and he knows how to get accomplished what he wants to get accomplished, no matter what the enemy's plans are. Amen. The enemy got all kind of plans, my friend. Hey, look, and look, he woke me up this morning, dude. Like these electronic devices. Trying to steal my jewel. But hallelujah. When I walked up in that room, my friend. Oh, I wish y'all could have been there. Man, I'm not trying to make you feel weird. I promise y'all not. Thank you for the ones that came in for a minute. Thank you for the ones that showed up late. Thank you for the ones that yeah. were there. Yeah, right. How y'all have been. Laundered up. Invited the presence of the Lord. That's good. That's good. The power of the Holy Spirit. Rip through me. Ah, in yeah. a good way. You know, conviction is yeah. good. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know that? Because conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know what it'll do? It's your head, bro. Yeah. It's your heart, right? It's yeah. right. yeah. right. 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 with the right. presence of God, man. Yes. Like, now I'm talking about because the Holy Spirit speaks things to you that man, man trying to convince you everything's okay. Come on now, say it. That's right. Mm. Men behind pulpits are trying to convince us that everything's okay. Yeah. Right. Oh no, preacher, don't get mad. Okay, let me let me move forward. Look, I got it. So the reason that I want to even talk about some of these things, and so what's the purpose of the mics? Do we need to turn them on? Is Rich still in the house? Yeah. Rich, do we need to get some? They're on. They're on. Okay, sweet. Mics are on. And what are the mics for? It's different. It's not traditional, but guess what? Oh. We're not here to build a YouTube channel. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I will. Is, is anybody logged into Facebook live stream right now? Yeah. Well, we want to welcome you here. Amen. And I know that y'all can sometimes like. I don't pay attention to them still, but I see other people do it. And I know that y'all can like it. I know sometimes y'all do it. We might have a small little crowd out there. That's okay. Small, big, one, two, right? 150, whatever. I want to encourage you to go ahead and chime in today if you've got some questions about what we'll be talking about. And maybe who's, who's logged in? Who can handle this? Who can, who can organize this? Are you logged in back there, dear? Can you go ahead and keep track uh, if people have questions? And then at some point, you can raise your hand and we can bring out a couple of questions. If you don't want your name mentioned, whatever, whatever. We want to open this up for people to be able to have the opportunity to ask questions because what we're about to get into is some depth of information. I've heard people talk about the fact that sometimes preachers go deep. We're about to go so deep over the next at least two services, maybe three, will be led by the Holy Spirit. We're about to go so deep in the spiritual realm that I've never heard anybody talk about it at the level we're about to talk about. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Now, that, that, all this means is, I, all this means is, is that the way God has navigated my ministry and my study has allowed certain pieces of information to be placed in me, and that God, the way He made me, 
has processed this information on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in such a way that this is the way the package is coming to you. It doesn't mean that other men of God have not seen these things. I'm trying to tell you that I have never heard someone break it down the way I believe God is wanting me to give it to you. And this is why God wants me to give it to you. There's a core group of people that started in this ministry that some things are happening differently than what we've been used to. Out of, out of humility of what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, he wants me to be able to communicate what I believe is going on and to bring it back to the Word of God so that you guys will be able to see what I believe is in the Word of God. And, some, and y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all that have been with us since the restaurant and then even a little bit after. Y'all been here a long time. Dude, what was that? <coughs> that was a long time ago. Okay, it's been years. And God wants you to know that he's let me know that you're important. I want you to know that. Amen? You're important. And your understanding of the scriptures is important to you. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know everything. I could sit here and I could study this for the next six months, but I promise you that what I'm going to share with you today has already been toiled over for years. Okay, pieces of information that's just coming together is being integrated and systematized in a way that it never had been. Well, I'm going to use some big words, but I'm trying to break them down. Because y'all, y'all, like, y'all, know, y'all know what the word systematized means. Yeah. Come on, man. Y'all know what that is. All right, okay. Let's, all right. Wrestling, huh? Well, okay. A system. Okay, let me bring it down now. A system. There's a system in Metal Shark, sir. There's a head of the company. He's a CEO. He handles and then it's filtered down and the money is given to workers that build marine vessels. There's a systematic approach to the way the organizational structure goes and we're about to systematize some information and it's the Holy Spirit that's going to reveal it to you. And guess what? Sometimes he's going to, he, no, you know what he's going to, he's going to reveal it. Amen. All right. Wrestling with the spirits. Okay? And so listen, this is a two-part series and the reason that the microphones are here, let me just make this clear, is that you're gonna, you may have questions along the way. And, and why do I have to do this? Because d- d- is it like, are we going to just ignore what's going on in this place? <coughs> no, we're not. Do we have to understand all these details in order for this to continue to go on in this place? No, we don't. We do not. You know what we need? We need faith in the power of God, and we need to invite the Holy Spirit in this place, and he's going to do the whole thing. What I, as a pastor, the reason I have to give this information is for you out there, especially the people that have been around a long time, that are seeing some things that look different than what we've always seen. Period. Done. Deal. That's why we're doing this. Now, I got after Wednesday night said, Pastor Matt. I know something's happening because something's happening in me to some extent. I'm just going to say your name, sis. Something's happening to me, but I need to understand some of this stuff according to terminology that I'm familiar with. I'm going to do my best to integrate all of this kind of information from you people way back in the gap to you new people that may not know anything. And before it's over, we're going to believe the Holy Spirit is going to reveal some things to us. But it's important that we understand the world that we live in. Listen to me. We live in a scientific intellectualized society. During the time frames of Jesus, when he walked the streets of Galilee, when he walked the streets of Jerusalem, when someone was vexed with the Spirit, when someone was possessed with the Spirit, when someone was oppressed with the Spirit, we'll talk about the Word, they knew what was going on. They knew it was a demonic spirit. They knew it was dealing and torturing and bringing sickness and disease. They knew it was vexing them and preventing them from getting to the Holy One of Israel. That's why the devil said, Jesus of Nazareth, what have we to do with thee? Have you come before the appointed time? Yes, he's come before the appointed time. His presence is in this place. Hallelujah. His presence is upon this earth, and his presence is flowing through human vessels, and he wants to bring deliverance and restoration. So if you have a question about anything, but I will I will let you know. You can stop anytime. You're free and you can ask the question. And I've already asked some of y'all, please get some questions going. Like if something sparked in your mind, and then once you do, other people will feel comfortable. If you have questions out there in video land, type it in there. Alright, wrestling with the spirits, possession, oppression, vex. I want to kind of talk about these words. Let me just give a 
a quick explanation this would be. I'm going to give you some definitions that I have scoured the scriptures, and what I have learned is this. These particular words that we're using, it's a matter of semantics sometimes. Yeah. Meaning, yes, we attribute <coughs> meaning to words, but sometimes the meaning of the word doesn't give us the full picture of what's really going on. Right. Sometimes just a simple definition of a word by itself does not explain what's really taking place. So then in those cases, we have to take the whole of Scripture and we have to try to take from the breadth of Scripture the concepts and then we have to try to bring that forth so that we can understand and have a definition that's larger than just some words, yes. if that makes sense. All right. So I want to stick with these particular three words. And the reason why is um, because we've heard this terminology and some of y'all will know what I'm about to say. And this is just because I'm using, trying to use language that y'all are used to. A Christian cannot be possessed, but they can be all right, so we're on the same page. So we're going to look at possession, oppression, and vex. Let me go ahead and give you some definitions. But before I do that, let's talk about this little graphic. Now, we're going to really be tearing into this graphic Wednesday night. I'm even offering, now listen, I'm not trying, Danielle and I had a little Valentine's get together, so I'm not trying to make y'all miss y'all Valentine's. We were, I call it that. Uh, we never celebrated Valentine's. I'm not telling you, you don't celebrate Valentine's Day. I went to Nina Copeland's and I said, hey, can we let this be our Valentine's Day? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with it. All right. All right. The Alfredo was not that good. Anyway, that's another story. This year. All right. So, so we never got that out the way. Now, I'm not telling you don't do your Valentine's with your boo. Okay. <laughs> I could care less about Valentine's Day, but that's me. But that, look, I don't, you don't need my attention. You do what you got to do on February 14th. All right. But if you're not, I'm willing to see. I'd like to go over some of the information about Wednesday night with the Bible study group. And everybody's invited to the Bible study group. I look, before I send out a text, we ain't got no click around here, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, me. I did though. Know, I called some people special people together that had come to the Michael Heiser book and some other people that we could really learn some stuff about the spiritual realm. And look, but this is the thing, I'm not trying to aggravate them. If you want to come, I want you to come. If you don't want to come, don't come. Okay, but the uh, last time we watched a couple of videos recently, we had some discussion about the beast system at one of our... That's a lot of deep stuff. Some of this stuff is deep. But I got good news. I've got an announcement to make. We're going to have Bible study tonight at 5 o'clock. Mr. Bill Fry will be facilitating. And I'm going to just go ahead and share because he hadn't given me permission, but I'm going to do it. I said, Bill, what you just said right there, I think I was working at Urgent Care Thursday. I said, dude, yeah, what you just said about the word there, look, are you going to facilitate a Bible study? He's like, yeah, well, I, I can pray about it. I'm like, all right, good. So look, if you do, you need to just say what you just said right there because that word of the Lord is going to minister to people. I'm not telling you what to say because I don't want to be the controller. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But I said, I'm just trying. So you know this, this oh, absolutely, I'll pray about it. Whatever. So he offered me to the pastor now. I'm sorry. That won't be the word. Dude, I love this. I love this. You know why? Because Pastor Matt had an idea, which was not a bad idea. It was a good idea. But it was a Holy Spirit idea. So Bill Lally's in his bed at night. I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> and he's sleeping. And he has a dream. And in the dream, he sees a word. But it's a Greek word. Paracletos. Oh, yeah. wow. So he had to wake up and make sure. So I don't even know exactly. No, I've already read his outline, which I can write so succinctly. I've already read his outline. It's going to be good stuff. How it flows, I don't know, but you're going to learn some. So if you want to be in Bible study at 5 o'clock tonight, we're going to have Bible studies, and it's going to be about the Holy Spirit. It's going to be very, very word based, and I'm excited to, to offer that to the church. Because can I let you in on a little secret? None of us in this room know the word of God as well as we need to. That's so right. I'm starting with the preacher. That's right. We're going to offer opportunities for people to grow. Whether or not we're going to avail ourselves to it. See, listen, I really don't want to take too much time with this, but I believe the Lord's going to give. People that have been coming to this Bible study for so long, y'all have seen. Remember how back in the day I used to make copies of all my notes? And I tried to be and not nobody take them. <laughs> and it's like some people are going to say, dude, what are you doing? You're wasting your time, and I'd be over there buying peas. Hey, Dr. Clark, is it okay if I use your copier? I'll bring some reams of paper. But what about the toner? Because you're not supposed to pill for stuff, Chris, right? That's right. You're not supposed to take stuff from your ball. That's right. Doesn't matter. So he's like, well, yeah, Matt, I want, I want, I want to make copies from a Bible study. He's like, don't worry about the toner, Matt. You're good. And I would sit there for hours. 
Well, not hours, but time that I had. Like, in between my little busy patience break, I'm over here. Let me make Why was I doing that? Because I love you. I love souls. I want people to learn about the gospel. I'm not fussing. I'm just saying not everybody's at that place where they want to read it. I get it. I get it. And the other day, I was over here. Using the new copy machine, I was on the floor when I was supposed to be praying. <laughs> I don't want all that mother shine no more. I asked out the other try to get it. We gotta figure out a way because look, we got a division in our house. She's Samsung, I'm Apple, and they ain't want to communicate. <laughs> 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 but we're gonna figure out how to get these notes in the website. We have a website, even though nobody uses it. We used to do it a long time ago. And they're gonna be there for you. And if you want them, you can print them and read them. And if you don't, it's okay. Amen? All right. So I'm, I'm just wanting you to know I'm trying. Okay? Can, and so we all know. Amen? All right. So here we go. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some of this in more detail. But look, real quick, let's just get some stuff across. It's going to be important for us to understand the makeup of human beings right. in order to understand how these entities are affecting us. And so one of the main things that I want you to see is this is that a human being is literally made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit. I put the hands and the feet up there because when we get into it more, I'm going to talk about, see, this is part of your body, and the Bible calls it sometimes your members. I'm not going to walk over there to the door today, but I will walk over there to the door Wednesday. Tuesday night, can I see a show of hands of anybody that doesn't have plans Tuesday night that would like to come be a think tank? I got one hand, I got two hands, three, four. But all right, that's good enough. We're going to do it Tuesday night after prayer, after prayer. Okay. And then maybe we can even help Jessica clean the place before. I can help. I can push her back here so that she can get out of here early too. Ha, ha. Yeah. So you get, you get it, right? So we're going to have think tank after prayer. Prayer starts at 5. If you don't want to come to prayer, then you don't have. It starts at 5 and ends at 6.30. If you don't want to come to prayer at all, it's okay. You're still invited to think tank. And if you can be here Tuesday night at 6.30, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. All right? Cool. I'm going to give to y'all what we're going to talk about Wednesday, because we're still going to do it Wednesday whether y'all all show up or not. We're still doing it Wednesday, but I want to talk about it. All right, so you get the point. I'm doing everything I know to do. I can't do any more of this. I'm trying to be led by the Holy Spirit. All right. The body, the soul, the spirit. So the body is this external, it's this uh, protoplasm, some would call it, okay? Think about this human body. Uh, imagine, I'm not trying to get you to do visible, visual imagery, I'm not weird, but just imagine uh, a blood vessel filled with fluid and, all, and teeming with cellular life. Blood cells, immuno, immunity cells, the fearfully and wonderfully, you know, the beast system is trying to recreate what God's already created through AI and robotics. And all. Man, now we go, you can't put protoplasm and create an intricate network of tissue that's all integrated and these vessels teeming with life and going from the, from the right atrium into the right ventricle and then push through the pulmonary artery into the pulmonary system where the red blood cell at the level of the alveoli extracts oxygen that we breathe in from this 21% O2 room air and it floods our red blood cell on the hemoglobin and, and carries it into the left side of the heart and into the left ventricle and it pushed into the body and along its journey, releasing oxygen at the cellular level in mes muscles and in neurons. And neurons in your brain are sending signals for your ear to hit the tympanic membrane and then to push some stuff called perilymph through these little hairs you have in your inner ear. And it sends a signal to your brain that says, hey, he's speaking. Process that in your thinker. And then when you process it in your thinker, now that you're alive to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit says, hey, he ain't just talking words. He's talking truth, my friends. Yeah. And it takes all of that. Now, this is what happened. The eyes too difficult. It takes all of that to make this man walk over there that door and open it up. So, listen. The body is just the external Protoplasm, the vessel that God created, you can't recreate this. Or you might try to clone it, you look counterfeit. You can't create this. 
That's really right. trying. Listen, I can't even get into you with the stuff I know. Lord, help us. They're trying to recreate this. Yes. That's They're right. trying to make you and I something oh, new. That's, that's right. another story. Mm -hmm. That's the big plan that they have. We've got to talk about individuals. And so this, but the Bible calls this your members. The Bible calls this your members, my friend, and if your members are tainted by the power of sin, your members are now possibly being used for works of unrighteousness. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 says, do not allow your members to be used as instruments of unrighteousness. So there's the body. That's the external part that we function and we navigate this can I say it? terrestrial world that we live in, this earthly world, right? God put us. We are some kind of, we are a being. We're a human being. But right now we're in a temporary vessel. Right. This vessel is corrupt in our first birth. In Adam. But Adam needs to die so that Christ <coughs> because Jesus brings life and he he brings in more life, right? So so that's what he does. He wants, so so now how did he purchase you? Wow, well, you were not bought with corruptible things such as silver or blood, with the precious blood of the Lamb, which was full day before the foundation of the earth. What does that mean? Jesus shed his blood and purchased your soul according to Revelation 5. Back to God from every tongue, tribe, and nation. He purchased you. Everybody been purchased, y'all. If you're not walking in redemption right now, if you're not work walking as God is your owner, that's your fault. You too out there. That's your fault. Change the page. I'm done monkeying around. We're either saved or we're not saved. That's right. Is that simple enough? That's right. We're either saved or we're not saved. But what does it mean to be saved? Look at that little kid over there paying better attention than the adults in the room. That's right. The Holy Spirit will keep your attention. Listen, you either saved or you're not saved. And this is so critical, so important. That we're over here doing all this little, oh, just say a prayer after me. The Lord convicted me. Come on. That's right. If he said a prayer, it's not bad. I'm not saying no, that. It I means that your heart's at least open. But what we're really supposed to be doing is bowing our knees. Uh -huh. Who owns you? Yeah. Who owns you? Who owns me? He purchased us. Have we given this? vessel that he created. <clears throat> the God of the universe created this. I don't care what science says. They're liars. That's right. Let every man be a liar. Only God is true. Yes. That's right. We have been created fearfully and wonderfully made. We have been created in the image and likeness of God. Right. And listen, he has sent his son to die on the cross to purchase the souls of men back to him. And they have either have we asked to us a big word, bow their knee or not? Have we bowed our knee? I hope you've bowed your knee. And if you haven't bowed your knee, you don't need. You, you could. You, you, you are welcome right now to come and bow your knee. And then we will all clap and applaud and you can do business with God right here as I continue to teach. But that's what needs to happen. People need to decide whether or not they're going to bow their knee. So over here is like trying to softly say, that's, that's relevant, church, man. That's super sensitive stuff. You have either bowed your knee to Jesus or you haven't. And if you have bowed your knee to Jesus, that means that you have given your vessel to him. And that means the Holy Spirit lives in you. And that means the Holy Spirit is holy! Yes. Yes. And he wants to produce holiness in you. I know your holiness only comes because of the fact that you're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. You think I don't know that? Come on, church. But the Holy Spirit is holy. Yes. Amen. Do not let the devil pull your family out of that chair and quit coming to this church. Amen. You gotta let me talk the truth. I was in a barroom bathroom as a Christian after 12 years, and you know what the story said? The Lord said, You will present my word for the way that it is written, and then I will use you. And that's what I'm saying. I ain't listening to no man. Amen. Amen. If you and listen, I'm here to admit, admit to you that I have not been right all the time. Lord, help me. That critical spirit. How many times do I have to say this? That critical spirit was a demonic spirit. Yes. yes. I don't know where it was, but we trying to figure it out. But it blinded me. Me, who knew such truths about the Holy One of Israel. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to ask a question. <laughs> Me, who knew such truth. Yes, bow our knee to Jesus, King Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Me, who, hallelujah, invite him in, brother. Oh, Jesus, please forgive me. Forgive me for, yes. for, not, for not being willing to bow my knee to you, for, for holding on to things that I think are important. Lord, you died. You, you died naked yes. on a cross. And you did that for me, and I'm trying to hold on to my reputation. I'm trying to look cool for society. I'm trying to be, oh, Lord, help us. Yes. I'm telling you, church, if we humble ourselves, 
words. That's not what I'm saying. But you got to do it. Come on. Right. You got to do it. You got to lower yourself in the presence of the king. This is his world. This is his kingdom. You've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You must bow your knee. Yes. You must bow your knee to him. Not me. Not my teaching. I'm nothing. I'm just a piece of clay. I'm not even right half the time. I'm not about him. This is his word. This is his word. This is his spirit that wrote this book. We can't let a man's opinion get in the way of this holy book. Yes. Oh, Jesus. So your body is what God gave you to navigate this physical, terrestrial world. And your soul and your spirit actually make up the inner man. I don't have time to get into this, but Lauren used to teach it. <coughs> I say, Lauren used to teach it like this. The spirit and the soul of man is one functioning unit. It's like a wheel. It's got a tire and a rim. If you remove a rim from the tire, you no longer have a wheel. Come on. So in order for the inner man to understand that, you need to understand it's one functioning unit. Well, you got scripture for that? Yes, sir. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. See, like bone is like joint, sorry, joint and marrow are part of bone. The, the two are not exactly the same, yet they make up a functional unit. And the only thing that can divide it is the word of the Lord. So your soul is not your spirit. Your spirit is not your soul. But the two together make up the inner man. And your inner man is encased in this physical flesh that navigates this journey. Okay, all you gamers out there, whenever you're playing a game, your little brain, and listen, by the way, in them games, most of those video games, there's a bunch of demonic barbers that's trying to, like a Barney Ball parade, I'm about to get into that before it's over. Yeah, right, it's right, time. I gotta go to work for 10 hours tonight at 2 o'clock, so I ain't too worried about your little time frame, okay? I'm just gonna be real with you. And as soon as the Lord starts pouring in the finances, or maybe he tells me to quit my job, then I will. As soon as he tells me, I will. But he gave me this job, and look, it's getting close to the point where I'm about to tell him, <laughs> hallelujah, boy, just keep on moving right now, right? right. Uh, <coughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Video game. I'm going to talk all morning, y'all. Releasing spirits into the atmosphere. I don't care whether you believe it or not. All right, now. I am not here. To sit here and play games with nobody no more. Come on. I'm here to tell you the truth, and you're going to do what you want with it. That's and right. look, you better be careful. Because see, once you know the truth, you're responsible for it. That's you right. and your vessel are responsible for the truth. That's right. I can try to help you. So, so the soul and the spirit are one entity, and they are interconnected as one, right? But there are there is difference. Your, your spirit is not your soul. Your soul is not your spirit. So let's just talk real quick about that. We'll get into it more the next time. Your spirit, I'm going to say it like this, because we got to get definitions. we got to understand. Your spirit is the life force given to you from God. I'm going to bring all kinds of scripture. It's the physical life. Like, in other words, once your spirit, once your inner man is released from this physical flesh, what's going to happen? Do I need to get off dramatic? You're going to look like a pile of clothes on. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Maybe a little more rigid than that, but you're going to fall to the ground because the life force is now out of you. Right. So the spirit of God, and we'll get into that next week, is, is also connected to the physical vitality. I know that he breathed into Adam and made him a living soul. I understand that. We'll get into that maybe today. But look, but at the same time, there's a spiritual life force on the inside of you. But yet that spiritual life force that gives you physical life may not be alive to God yet, according to Ezekiel 36 and according to John chapter 16. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit is a person, and he's grieved whenever we don't see him that way. Whenever you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of your vessel. Now your spirit is awakened to the truth of God. And according to Ezekiel 36, not only is your spirit renewed, but the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside of you. And so now, according to one of the scriptures in Corinthians, I don't remember it off the top of my head. I, I, I may be in, my, in next week's sermon. 
uh, that the spirit of God along with the spirit of the man are also in unity. That's why deep must cry out to deep. That's why God is spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit of the man is interconnected to the spirit of God. And let me tell you something. We want to word possessed. We're about to get into it. Christians cannot be possessed because demon spirits cannot own the spirit of the human being because God purchased yes. the spirit. God created that spirit and God purchased his spirit back from darkness through the blood of an eternal lamb. And when you, with your free will, acquiesced, bowed your knee to the plan of God, now you have taken ownership in Christ and you now belong to God the Father, and no devil in hell can own that unless you, with your free will, allow demonic spirits and the lies of Satan and the sinful nature to overwhelm your vessel, and you continue to indulge in a banquet of sin, and you continue to allow sin to have its way in your heart and life, you may come to a place in your life, in your walk, where you are now backslidden, where you have now grieved the Holy Spirit so much that you have asked him to depart, and that was never your intent, whenever the angel of light root through the right lure into the pond and rippled the waves of the pond and you as a fish in the sin pond started to nibble on the bait and you took it, hook, line, and sinker and now you open up a door I didn't plan on saying it this way but the Holy Spirit had your way you Christian open a door you Christian who knew the word of the cross you open the door and what did you let in? Mm, that's right. what did you let in? Oh, I don't buy prostitutes no more, preacher man. I don't buy prostitutes and I don't smoke a cookie of crack. I ain't touched the crack pipe on my lips and God knows how long. I don't even know if there's anybody in here that's not practicing. <laughs> I had done, well, what have you done, sir, now that you've been freed from your drug party life, prostitute? Internet pornography. I'm not gonna say those oh, words. Go on pornography. Um, what, what? What did you? What did you? What did you maybe open up a door to that you weren't even aware of? Because right, right. right. If Satan can turn into an angel, why would you be surprised that the ministry can't do the same thing? And if that be the case, you think that demon spirit can clothe himself with something that looks voluptuous, lustrous, beautiful? Oh, he looks so good. And look, I think he's holy because he feels good. Right. Let me go ahead. It looks good to the eye, and it's good for. Let me put it in Help us, Lord. Oh, Help us, Lord. Oh, it feels so good. Let me go get another little nibble of that. Mm -hmm. See, you get a little, see, I go, it's been a little while. I've been being good. Come feed me. Help us, Lord. It's saying, come feed me. And here we go. We go to give another nibble. And we allow that thing to drop. I mean, where is it? When I open the door, where did it go? Well, I don't know. I want you to tell me. I want you to think about this. I want you to process. Because, look. I'm just going to talk to you right now. I got all these scriptures, but let me just talk. Where do demon spirits come from? Uh, let me mention that. Let me give you some, some definitions. Oppressed. This is in the King James Version of the Bible. The word, it's an English word, but it is in the King James Version That's of the Bible. That's right. Okay, so we've heard this, this, this statement before, right? But, but, but we haven't really dug deep. Whose fault is that? My fault? Your fault. Something's fault. I'm going to take my own responsibility. <clears throat> my fault. Oppressed. King James. Look what it says. To exercise harsh control over one, to use one's power against one. Let me ask you a question. If you're looking for an oppressed Christian, what are you expecting to see? Now, the Lord is starting to open my eyes and he's showing me some things. He's showing me some symptomatology, my friend. Well, oh, wait, okay, are you going to open the Symptoms. As a healthcare provider, the Lord showed me in the spiritual realm there are also symptoms. And sometimes I'll be looking at somebody, and one second they got the joy of the Lord on their countenance, and then the next second they look at their phone. Yeah. Their countenance is changed. Right. You can see it, their joy. And if you push a button at that moment right there, you might have a carnal fit anchor. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And is that just the world? No. Nope. Or is that a Christian? Yep. Yes. yes. And could that be a Christian that understands the message of the Lord? Yes. yes. Yep. So if you open up that kind of door and that kind of thing and happen, what's causing that? 
Oh, my sinful nature is just inflamed. Okay, well, who's stimulating that? Yeah. We're going to get into that. I've got graphics for you, my friend. It's all out today. We're going to get into it. So what is going on is the question. So oppressed means, and there can there be different levels of oppression in a Christian? I believe that there can be different levels of oppression. And the question is, whatever the demonic spirit is doing his business, what is it affecting? Is it in the spirit? I know it's not in the spirit because that belongs to God. It's somewhere. But man, let, let me hold my thought on that. All right, let's go to the next. Possess. Here's the word possess. It may be hard to see, but look, the Greek word for that, if I was going to try to spell it, let me just bring my little iPad over here. Okay, this is Greek, and I'm not going to write it again in Greek, but I'm going to write it in English as a transliteration from the Greek language. Diomenizomai is how you would say it. Diomenizomai, all right? And I went, but, but if I was going to write it in English, like just using English alphabet letters, the word would be Daya mo nai zo ma, something like that, okay? And so it's the middle voice, that's not what's important. But this is the word to be possessed, and the idea is this is where we get the word demon from. Daya moi, daya mai, demonia, okay, root words of this. So there's a popular guy that does deliverance ministry, and some of y'all have sent me his videos, and I watched them. But I was watching them already before that occurrence took place before my daughter. When that lady showed up, I was already watching those videos, and I was critiquing them so hard. I was about to turn them off, and I already shared that with y'all. But then he said something about the soul, and I let it run. I still don't agree with everything. This is the point, though. Who cares what you agree with, preacher? Like, are you operating in that gift like you should? No, I'm not. Okay, is it real? I'm trying yes. to tell you that I feel like it is. Yes. Okay, maybe. Anyway, I didn't agree with the way that he was correlating that Ananias, Sapphira, and Judas would have been the same kind of believer that you and I are because that was before the cross. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Once the cross takes place, and then I'm just going to tell you another guy. Another guy, that was Isaiah Salvador. I was starting watching David Hernandez, and this dude, he didn't say Isaiah's name. He didn't, but I know that's what he was talking about because he pointed out the same exact thing that the Holy Spirit showed me yeah. that he was also having a problem with, but he's, he's better than I am in that his, his, he didn't feel like it was necessary to call a man's name out because the truth of the matter is these people are walking in an anointing and a power right. that, and they're getting things accomplished for the kingdom of God. And I actually heard both of them preach the message of the cross right. and they have not used it. And if there's something else down the pipe that they're saying that's wrong, okay, I am not the protector of God's word. But I thought I was. <laughs> Oh, no, expose the unfruitful works of darkness. Oh, no, don't let false apostles and wolves come into the house of God. Oh, no, people do work under demonic anointings. I get it. But if I start shutting off everything that I think, people shut me off because I might say something that's not right. Because I'm a man. That's right. And I'm fallible. Yeah. Because the story about the Pope ain't true. It's not true. There are not infallible humans. Only two. Adam died and he was no longer <coughs> infallible. He was tainted with sin. Jesus died and he had no sin. Right. And that's why he rose from the dead. Every other man is fallible. Every other man from the Adam is born with a sinful nature. That's right. He's dependent upon the voice of God to hear from God. And if he lets a critical spirit. spirit. Yes. Yes. I jump in that door. You figure that out. Mm -hmm. You think I'm going to know? I'm not here to tell you who does and who doesn't. I see countenances. I see symptoms. I see spirits of heaviness now. I walk around with my eyes open and I see things. Didn't see it before. Oh, I may be a little bit, but now I see. The weights and the burdens trying to hold people down. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. What does oppression mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, if oppression means to be harshly controlled by someone, are there differing levels of that kind of oppression? And if possession means to be exercised by a demon, what, what does that even mean? And then the word possessed is also the same word as vex. That's right. And, it's, and they're both in the King James. Yep. And I want to have to do a deeper study to see if there's little minute intricacies 
or reasons behind it, and I haven't got there yet, but I'm not going to delay because I probably still won't be able to figure every single thing out because God is God and I'm a man and I'm a piece of clay and he's a potter and he's molding me with his holy hands and as long as I allow him to keep adding the water and keep my head, as long as I keep my vessel under his holy hands. As long as I keep my vessel under his holy hands, guess what's going to happen? He's going to mold me. Amen. But if I throw myself off and say, this is a bunch of garbage. I don't need this. This is just this is just garbage. Then guess what? Go to sleep, little buddy. Ooh. Go to sleep, sir. Go to sleep, man. I'll wake you up when the service is over. And I'll wake you up in about five years from now or ten years from now. Whatever the enemy has ravaged your life. Yes. When the enemy has come in and he's trying to destroy you. To the point where even your body now is mangled by the enemy. Oh, we better wake up now, Christians. I'm talking about getting under the authority of the Holy One of Empire. Keep your hand under the potter's hand. Keep your vessel under there. It's okay. It's okay. So what does it mean? Vex. Vex is the same. Demon possessed. All this stuff. Okay. Look. What does it mean to be exercised by a demon? One of the definitions of exercise in the American English translate uh, dictionary is this. A putting into action, use, operation, or effect. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and let's get into the Word of God, and let's try to talk about some of these things that we read. So look, <laughs> I put a lot of scripture in here, and I want you to just work with me on this. We titled today's message, we titled it, The Wrestling with Spirits, and we talked about those words, and I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 11 through 12. All right? The word of the Lord says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, I want you to see this word wiles is actually the word. Listen, some of you people are too old to know this, but there used to be a cartoon called The Roadrunner. Yeah. Beep, beep. <laughs> and Wiley Coyote was constantly setting traps to trap Roadrunner. And you didn't know it was coming. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The Bible says the devil is wily. The word in the Greek is methodia. The devil got methods. The devil got methods. He's got tricks. He's got traps. The devil knows how to set a snare, my friend. And he will come any way he can. He'll come through a game. He'll come through music. He'll come through a video. He'll come through Hollywood. If you think I'm crazy, turn me off. It's okay. I don't really care anymore. He will come through your best friend. He will come through your pastor. He will come through another preacher. He will come because he ain't playing duty. He hates you. And he hates me. Good news! Good news! He can hate me all he wants to. He ain't got no authority over me, buddy. Jesus owns this vessel. Jesus! Hallelujah! Powerful teaching of exousia, the jurisdiction and delegation given by God to the human vessel that has been purchased by the blood of Jesus, a vessel now that has been given the jurisdiction of God to allow the dunamis power of God to flow through it and to go to the power of heaven. And now you're a conduit. Right. In the Holy Spirit, you can translate it into another kingdom, my friend. And listen, you ain't fighting flesh and Come on. Verse 12, you wrestle not the wrestling of, with the spirits. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness. Pneumatic, the spirit. Demons are spirits. Spirits. Humans are spirits. Angels are spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit. Angels don't have physical bodies. I don't know what kind of body they have, but they got some kind of celestial body, but it's not terrestrial. Angels are not for this world. They were not that I know of created on this world, but they want this world. Because why? Why do they want a fallen angel? Why would a fallen angel want this world? Because it belongs to God. Why would a fallen angel have a plan to take over you? Because you belong to 
Oh, I know people. This preacher is crazy. Good. Oh, by the way, I do have a video on Mardi Gras that I did probably about 10 years ago. It's got more likes than any other video I've ever had. It's got me getting close to what? How many likes? Now it's not that many, but. Over 6,000. Over 6,000. All right. And so we just recycle it every year. And that's old school stuff, dude. Now I know stuff. The other stuff. <laughs> okay, but I'm just trying to make a point. People are hungry. Mm. Oh, we got to talk about morning run before it's over. <laughs> now, I don't really care about stuff on your toes. I'm just, I know. What, when I say that, I say it with all love. I, know right? I say it with love and compassion because I love you. Mm. That's why I say these things. Mm. I know that sometimes it's misinterpreted or heal my personality so people don't get the wrong thing. But I'm here to tell you the truth. I want to help you. Yeah. All right? So, so here we go. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, pneumatikos, evil spirits. They affect you. They affect the world. They affect politicians. And then, listen, one of the things <coughs> I want to tell you about demon spirits is this, is that, um, you know, well, let, let, let me just go back a little. What does that mean? Okay. What does it mean? What is possession? What is oppression? Can oppression turn into possession? What does possession look like? What does oppression look like? And I want to have a question. Do you remember? Nobody has a question yet? Okay. Do you remember when you first got saved, how you felt? The cleansing, the burden lifted. Do you remember a time not much later where weights started piling up again? I'm just asking you a question. You don't have to say yes. But I know that I did. In two weeks, I was on a motor vessel of a point marine, reading the book of Revelation. As soon as I got off, I started dipping again. Ended up, it's a long story. Immediately, I felt the spirit of heaviness. Yeah. After I got off of that boat, come back home. What was that? Okay. What about, uh, do you remember, um, what about uh, even, what about after the revelation of the finished work of the Christ? Was there a period unburdened and then slowly weighted down again? I'm just asking a question. I'm not saying, what is that? What is the answer to that? Will repentance and proper faith fix it? Absolutely. I believe it will, but what is true repentance? Do we ask these questions? What is true repentance? You need to let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you because I can promise you it ain't. I'm sorry, Lord, and I just keep doing my same old garbage. It ain't that, my friend. Amen. It's brokenness in the presence of a holy God. It's me bowing my knee and doing business with the Lord and let God search the depths of my heart yes. to show me where there might be pride and insolence. To show me whether it might be lust of the flesh and not fruit of the spirit. To show me where I'm wrong and where he's right. Amen. And then repentance lies up. Yes. You ain't here to do business with me, my friend. That's right. You're here to do business with the one that I preach. Amen. And I want to preach it because he found me a stinky ballroom bathroom. Yeah. You can get them all. So what makes cross preaching, cross believing, people that believe in victory in Jesus, who love Jesus, and believe the word of God, act a certain way? And when I mean a certain way, I mean living their lives where they produce lust of the flesh instead of fruit of the spirit. For those of us that have been changed by the truth of God's word, is it possible that after the power of the cross delivered us from the big stuff, drugs, alcohol, pornography, prostitution, fornication, that through the days, weeks, and years, we somehow open up doors, Ephesians 4, 27, give no place to the devil, to other spirits that seem less obvious, ones like I've been talking about, critical, religious, fear, gluttonous. Let me say something about gluttony for a second, because I never talk about it. There's got to be a difference between overeating and a spirit of gluttony, right? That's right. There's got to be a difference between getting angry and having a spirit of anger. Yes. There's got to be a difference between a fearful moment, like I come up behind you and I say, boo, and you jump, versus a spirit of fear. Yes. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Where does it go from my over eight? Because I can tell you, I overate last night, but right now, I do not feel like I've got a spirit of gluttony. I've had a spirit of gluttony before. And I'm not here to tell you whatever I had. Look, I had fasted for two days and I felt like eating. So I been, and I didn't even eat all the food I ordered, but I ate a, a plethora of food and I was still like, I even ate cheesecake last night. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real with you. I weighed 212 about three weeks ago, and this yesterday morning I weighed 202. So I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm just saying it just happened. I'm, I'm telling you to fast up so you can lose weight because I've done that before too. What about a spirit? What about I need to get in better shape? Come on. Uh oh. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Here we go. Yes. Oh, it needs to be said. Right? Yes. Come on. Come on with the Come on. 
I need to get in a better state. Okay, so here I go. Two out of 45 pounds, I'm going to start walking, I'm going to start dying. And that's it, you know, I'm in the gym. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I got. Oh, yeah, supplement. And a mirror. Oh, hey, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>
And another ER we have, we're trying to be careful with the names. Another ER we have, I'm working, working side by side. So within five days, I heard doctors having conversation. In this conversation, the nurse, who the first time he called it the clot shot, and I didn't really know what he meant because maybe he thought I was a conspiracy theory. I don't know what he meant. I just ignored it. Now I hear him the doctor have a dialogue and said the CDC is admitting it. And they, listen to what the nurse said. And they put us under pressure to do it. What are they doing? Is this frustrating? And then the doctor says, and now this MRNA garbage is in our body. And it can never be removed. I'm here to tell you what I heard with my own ears. People are talking. And they need answers. Yes. And if you got a shot, it ain't no big deal. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. He can heal. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. He already healed you. Amen. You ain't got nothing to fear. Yes, Jesus. You got nothing to fear. Hallelujah. You belong to the Lamb of God. That's right. Hallelujah. He came away the sin of the world. Yes, yes, yes. He's covered by blood. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. That was a lie from Satan. Come on. Yes, it was. Would you better fear? Listen to me, Corey. Would you better fear? Is the same spirit that released that fear yep. to make us take a shot. Because yep. the next time it comes around, That's right. it may very well do something different. Come on. And all I'm trying to say is yeah. if we have our timing wrong, don't mm -hmm. get mad at me. I'm just trying to speak with love and concern. If we have our timing wrong, the spirit. Fear through the work of the beast system right. is going to try to make people bow. Listen, this right. wasn't even that bad, dude. It yep. really wasn't. I mean, yeah, it had to do with our jobs. <laughs> so that's why I felt it too. But it ain't worth your soul. Come on. Nope. <laughs> and ain't no coming back from that. Amen. Ain't right. no coming back from that. That's right. In the hospital, they want to fire me. By your pediatric might want to fire me. Whoever might want to fire me. Who am, I, am I supposed to live under the, the burden of man? Come on. Or am I supposed to speak truth? Sure. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Do you remember when you first got saved, right? So we've got off on the gluttonous thing. So you get the point of this. We don't want to eat with the spirit of gluttony, right? right? Pride. Okay. Rebellious. Let me just say this. A rebellious spirit doesn't seem like a rebellious spirit, if I think I'm right. <laughs> but you, know, you understand what I'm trying to say? A rebellious spirit doesn't seem like a rebellious spirit, if I think I'm right. It's like I'm blinded to it. I don't realize that it's really <coughs> spirit of pride, religious spirit, critical spirit, a rebellious spirit. What I mean is this. Not because you're rebelling against me, but because God has the truth in his word. And if you're not lined up under his word and the authority of his word, because we've got a bunch of men with a bunch of interpretations. But there's a right interpretation. And you can be out there in video land and you can yell at that. That's why I don't go to church preaching. Well, guess what? That ain't going to work, my friend. That's right. The Word of God says, forsake not the gathering of the brethren. The Word of God says, give your bow your knee to Jesus and let him have his way with your heart. That ain't going to, that monkey sign ain't going to work. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't love church. Christians don't act like Christians and preachers don't act like preachers. That ain't going to work on judgment day. That's you either going to be having your wedding going on or you're going to be kicked out. You're either going to be a wheat or a tear. You're either going to be burned up or brought into the storehouse. That's right. Period. Done deal. You're either going to be a goat or a sheep. Period. Done deal. Straight up, undiluted, undiluted truth. And there will be a place for sinners to go. And it is prepared in advance for the devil and his angels. Come on. God never wanted a man to spend eternity in a devil's hell. That's right. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. But yet there will be countless. Listen to me, Christian. If you're saved, then maybe you have nothing to fear. But if you ain't saved, you better do business with God. It will be a horrific. You know what's happening to me when we go out fast and pray? Heart is broken for souls. Let me say that a little bit louder. My 
My heart is becoming broken for souls. We got any questions yet? No? Yes, go ahead. Take the mic, sir. Okay, so uh, we, have, we have identified three primary words. Two of the words, one being vexed, one being impression. Is there a stage at first you're vexed and then it's oppression next? Or is it oppression and then vexed? Or are they completely separate in a progression stage type of thing? Good, good question. So I, I just gave you the definitions. Vexed and possession are exactly the same Greek word. Now what I try to explain is if there is slight nuances in the occurrences where the King James translated, translators chose to use the word vexed instead of possession, I have not had the time to dig into the specific occurrences that take place. But for now, we're going to talk. But, but the way that Kilpatrick used the word vex, he gave a definition of it. And he made it very clear. I'm not saying Christians can be possessed. I'm telling you, I don't understand everything I'm titled in this series vex. Okay. So the word, in my way of thinking, that's a good question, vex and oppression and influence and control, those are the kinds of words that I'm using to describe what can happen to a believer. Right. I'm reserving the word possession, just so that you understand what I'm talking. I'm reserving the word possession because that's what we've always known. So I'm not trying to change a bunch of words on all to cause confusion. I'm reserving the word possession to specifically talk about the concept that I will break down more on Wednesday, that the devil wants your spirit. The devil wants your life force. The devil does not want your spirit to be awakened to God. The devil wants to drag you to hell with him. Right. All right. Does that answer your question? Yes. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so listen to this. Hey, I don't believe that it will always be so violent. Some people have given me testimonies that when the, work, when the devil came out, wherever it was, so I'm talking about sometimes it's Christians. Wherever the devil was, and that's one of the things, when we open the door, where does the devil go? We're going to dig into that too, right? Okay, I believe it's connected to the soul, man. But look, I'm going to move forward. So look, the spirit shrieked. That's what the NIV said. The spirit shrieked and convulsed and violently and came out. The boy looked so much. Now this can't be like what we're dealing with today because this was before the cross. So right. the Holy Spirit wasn't living in him. It doesn't, it's not the same thing. Okay, but I'm trying to make a point. And the spirit cried, this is the King James, and rent him sore. I'll just say it right here. Somebody recently shared with me that they woke up after they felt like they were delivered and they had bruises on their body. Mm -hmm. Do what you want with that. This person had been a believer in the past and had been a tough talker. But also admitted to me that they had been in places three times a week they ought not have been. So that's the kind of progression I'm talking about, friend. Yes. It starts with a temptation and then he lures you. Yes. He lures you. Can I share the dream you had or no? And, and it's fine. It's no big deal. The one, the one that after the service Wednesday, the dream that you had had prior that you felt like might have some meaning. To, you should hear with that. All right. Pam said after she was prayed for here, and anybody that was up here knows that there were some various things going on. Can I tell you exactly what all exactly? I don't have the answer to that, but Pam can tell you more about her soul, her mind, her will, and her emotions. I never really said this, this is going to be next week. Her individuality, her consciousness. You understand that as a human being, you're an individual. Yes. You have a name. Your name is Bill. My name is Matt. And I have a whole history behind me that I will carry with me. I believe that with all of my heart. My soul is my individuality. It's the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yes. It's what the enemy wants to start with. Right. But ultimately, he wants to steal your spirit. All right. So what has happened in Pamela's life when she was a little girl, when she was a teenager, deep? I don't know. She hasn't opened up to me. I mean, I'm just going to be real. Sabrina's opened up some things to me through the years. I ain't talking about her business. People have been through some stuff, buddy. People have been through some stuff in their life. And if you, now, oh, but I got saved and showed the message of the cross. Yeah, they could. But do you think that that devil wants to leave that in? Come on. Let me just go ahead and open up a little door. Yeah. Maybe it started with a critical spirit. Maybe the critical spirit, he said, Shh, I got a block home. Shh, I got him block. This is not how it works. I don't know if it makes sense to me. Shh, hey, I got a block right now. Come on. Come back. Come back. Fear. Come on, fear. Oh, now I've opened up the door back to fear. Huh? And now what am I going to do? It's too bad. Jesus can't fix it. No, I can't. Yes, he can. I'll go find something else. 
Just to get a solace of pain. Oh, now I'm getting really blind. Now the blindness is coming over this poor. And can you see? The Christians can't be possessed. They can only be oppressed. What does that even mean? Yeah. Right. I can't right. see that. Right. I'm bumping in the wrong. I need some help. I don't even know what I need help from. Mm. See, that's what I'm trying to say. So she had a dream prior. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I Lily needs to hear this. Because I'm, look, I'm all about Lily. <laughs> But Lily don't even understand what she's really doing. But guess what? Do you have to understand? Does Isaiah need to complete? He didn't walk in authority. That's right. Years. That's right. So whenever God starts sending people in here, if, and then I'm trying to hear you tell you, Christians can be oppressed. Yes. That's right. Oh, yes. And exactly what does that mean? Right. So if you can be oppressed, what are we going to do when the Lord starts opening up the doors and sending those in that could be possessed? That's right. Oh, all right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus knew what was going on, man. The scientific medical community has put us night night. They turn everything into a DSM five code. Yes. Someone knows what that means. Psychiatric look. Come on, Rob. Back in the gap, we did all that research on psychology. Come on, man. Dude, listen. There's so many stories out there. We ain't even got time for all that. They had an island. What was the name of that island? All them psychiatrists. But I don't care if they like it or not. All the psychiatrists went out there to that island and they brainstormed and they said, let us create drugs that will actually produce psychiatric symptoms and then let us attach diagnoses to this. Do you believe? How can you believe such a thing? You're a provider. Oh, come on, man. Get off my back, Jack. You're over here. You've been lying to you, dude. Come on. Wake up. Mm. Wake up and grab hold of this book right here. Mm. Let it, come on. Put some real knowledge in there. That's right. There you go. Mr. Doctor. That's right. That's what we need. We need that right there. Amen. All right. So anyway, I don't know how deep you get. Oh, so the dream. The dream was prior to the event, a few days maybe, and she shares her dreams with me sometimes because I feel like the Lord helps me and sometimes interpret, but I don't always get it right. And in the dream, there was a little boy that was back with the Spirit. He was oppressed with the Spirit. And she was trying to pray over the Spirit or over the situation. And it wouldn't come out. And then Lily was in the dream. And Lily started praying, but the little boy got mad. Yeah. For me, whenever I was praying over him, he got angry. All I did was upset him. Okay. When Lily prayed, he got real angry. But then he Okay. Prayed. She said, when she prayed for him, the little boy got angry. When Lily prayed for him, he got really, really angry. He did not get delivered. He got up and he walked out. Then she said, he disappeared. He disappeared. Oh, he disappeared. Oh, Lord. No. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. That's even worse. All right. So. <laughs> He disappeared. <laughs> and in the dream, she was standing with her back to an open door, mm -hmm. but you didn't want to look in the room. Yeah, eerie. Eerie. But what she did see in the dream was that she, Pamela, had handfuls of cigarettes yeah, and was trying to shove them in her pocket. And there was also bottles of pills that were empty underneath the table. Mm -hmm. Now, you might need a little bit of Daniel help, but I'm telling you right now, the wisdom of that dream tells me that what happened to her that night was preparation to let her know that she needed to let the Lord do business with her because we don't know what all been up in that girl. She's been through so much stuff in her life. Right. Things that might be trying to attach itself deep down. She ain't possessed. She's an intercessor warrior. Yes, God. God, have you ever seen this girl? Like, I ain't trying to pump nobody up, dude. He's awakening all of y'all with gifts, and the devil is mad. Yes. Can't be 
<laughs> but they can't be oppressed. But what does that mean? Right. All right, you with me? Yes. Now I want you to think of this. This is what it is, see? These spirits were revered when they were physical beings. Do you understand what demon spirits are? That's another thing. If you're told that there was something else, you're not even mm -hmm. mentally prepared to deal with this. This might be hard for some of you because we're all at different levels. This is the word of God. This comes out of Genesis chapter 6. Right. It also comes out of the letters that Peter wrote of. I'm about to embark upon the knowledge journey with you. And I'm sorry that the very Bible college that I went to, Southwestern Assembly of God University in Waxahachie, Texas, teaches Genesis 6 as though it's something different. Just like all, most, not all, most pastors behind the pulpit teach it the same way. Yep. That the sons of God were the offspring of Cain. No. And that they slept with the daughters of men, which they claim to be the offspring of Abel. And then the question is, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, the offspring of Seth, maybe. Seth, sorry. The offspring of Seth. And that it created giants. What? Look, did, when I didn't even know the truth, I knew that was the truth. <laughs> How is the communication of the coming together seed and egg coming together to reproduce after its own kind and produce giants? That's right. No. The Bible teaches very clearly the sons of God or the fallen sons of God that were along with <laughs> Satan, the Satan, the adversary, or the, the real one. Let's just put it that way. I have no reason not to believe that that Satan was not the Satan. Right. Presented himself to God in the book of Job. And God said, what are you doing? It, it, and, and along with him, the sons of God, fallen angels, descended according to tradition in the book of Enoch upon the Mount of Hermon. Oh, why do you talk about the book of Enoch? Because Jude quotes it. Because Peter quotes it. It's not the Bible. It's a historical book that will help you understand things. Don't read it like a scripture, but hey. <coughs> fallen angels cohabited with the daughters of men and produced an offspring that was different than human beings right. and different than angels. Mm. Now, this is what gets really deep that I never thought of before. Humans are spirits. Angels are spirits. Right. Angels have never had a terrestrial body. They have a celestial body. I believe they can transmorph, yep. transfigure, whatever you want to call it. Everyone I'm talking about Hebrews chapter 13. This is some deep stuff. Just take what you can get. And what you need to know is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You don't have to understand all this other stuff if you don't get it. But some people need to know. So, yeah. So, and it's happening in church, so we're going to tell the whole church. That's right. And the Holy Spirit's going to move. If you don't leave, the Holy Spirit's going to move and He's going to work in you. That's right. He's going to heal you. He's going to set you free. Yeah. But you need to know what you've been dealing with. You need to know what you've been dealing with. You've been vexed by a devil. You've been oppressed by a devil. Some of you have anyway. Yes. Bill said, oh, if people ain't like to hear that, I like get that. You think that I like to hear that? I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is that that critical spirit was a demonic spirit that was blinding me. I don't know how else to tell y'all. I'm willing to tell you what I believe was happening to me, bro. Y'all got to just man, man up. Y'all got to uh -huh. man up. And if you think that it's not you, then just shut me up. Mm -hmm. and so I'm okay with it either way. Just don't. Okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> All right, so these things, but 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 you angels, according to Hebrews thirteen, can can appear like a human, but they're not human. Right, right. And so I don't know how they did this. Was this some quote unquote History Channel space technology star? I don't know. I like more like that. One. I don't know what it was. I don't know if they transformed themselves into a human and they had a male member and they impregnated a woman. I don't know. And I don't really care that much. I'm here to tell you it happened according to the word of the Lord. And let's give them names. That's right. Because if we give them names, we'll understand they got a human connection even before they're connected to a human. Because they walked around in some form of terrestrial or earthly body. Let's give them some names. Goliath. That's right. <clears throat> wow. Amak. Yeah. Og of Bashan. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel 23. I can't remember his name. It's been a Bob. Who's he? Well, that's Goliath's brother. They had names, dude. They had consciousness. 
They at least had part of a soul of mine. I'm not saying that they have a soul. It's too deep for me to dig into right now. I ain't preaching here. I'm just saying, dude, they have navigated this physical world. They understand human beings better than angels do. You hear me? Because mm -hmm. angels ain't never been part of Angels peer through the portals of heaven at this thing called salvation, the good angels of God. And they're amazed. And they're like, come on. Come on! Bring your knee to the ground and bow your knee to Jesus. Come on! And dispatch and warring angels in the midst of this scenario. Holy Spirit, breathe fresh in the new. Come! Come to Jesus. Oh, is he going to do it? Do you think he's going to bow his knee? Oh, look! He's getting up! Oh, let him go, you lying devil! And then he bows his knee. Oh, and true salvation takes place. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, all the angels of God joined in the heavens and fire. Hallelujah! Another soul flooded into the kingdom of God. Another spirit of a man snatched out of the gates of hell. Yeah. All the blood. <laughs> this is real Bible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is true. Yes. And men are afraid to preach. Well, you rebuke them, Lord. Because I know one thing. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. I know what you told me, and I will stick you back to And I'm sorry, Lord, for bringing you there. And I'm sorry, Lord, you had to wake me up again while I was watching Netflix before I was about to go get my daughter out of a horrendous. Situation. It's time for people to wake up, buddy. The days are getting dark, and God's looking for a bride that will put some oil in her lamp. Oh, yeah. So her lamp can burn bright yeah. as the days get darker. Yeah. Wake us up, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Wake us up. Listen, these things in the old days. You do understand that other teachers could be wrong about some things too, right? We're already talking about that. Yes. Man, it's solid. Who they are, that's between you and the Lord. What it is, that's between you and the Lord. I'm going to believe or I'm introduced with a new biblical thought that's different than what I've been taught before. It's different than what other preachers say. I don't like it. I don't understand it. But I don't want to take the time to study for myself. Okay? That, that could happen to each one of us. It happened to me for years. When I came to start talking about deliverance ministry, I was like, dude, keep yourself away from me. <laughs> and what the Lord did? Y'all know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Hide it? What kind of man is God will hide? If he's been wrong and stuff. If I've been wrong and stuff, what am I supposed to do out there in the preaching world, in the church world? In a world full of preachers that right. don't admit when they're not right. right. Help us, Lord. Yes, for you. Oh. If this is too much for the kid, then y'all want to go play around with the little kids back there, y'all want to release. If y'all don't really care enough about the things of God to understand what the demon spirits are wanting to do to you too, what they're doing to your friends, y'all can go do that. That's right. That Amen. That's right. Y'all play around with the little kids. Y'all have permission to get up and go. That's right. I know you probably won't because it's embarrassing because you need to sit here and you need to listen. That's <laughs> right. You need to listen. We are talking about the monster, man. We are talking about the devil that wants to rip your heart out and stomp on it. That's right. Amen. He wants to make you look like a buffoon. He wants to make you look like a Fool. That's right. He wants you to die and go to a devil's hell, and he wants worms to crawl in and out of your nose, and he wants the fire of hell to lift up your backside and to yeah. burn you so hot that you will wish you would have listened to a preacher, and you will wish there would have been a people in a church that would have prayed for your soul, and you will wish there would have been like a church that I was saved in at 13, but finally when I was out there in the world doing all kinds of stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing, they were on their face. Pray for me. When I had that doofy man reading tarot cards, and when I let Tim Bob do that spell, and when I was over there mucking around in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you saved my soul. Yeah. This stuff is business, man. Don't let the devil get your heart mad at me, Christian. I don't care how old you are. 
I'm telling you the truth. Yes. The truth convicts people. And, yes. and when, listen, when the truth comes in a way and it's too That's long, right. it's too hot, it's hot. No. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not, and I don't need you to turn it down. I'm okay. I'll preach hot. But listen to me. Don't let the temperature affect you, man. Go turn the temperature down if you need to. This stuff is serious business, man. I, I, listen, I can't help it the way it comes out of me. Don't get mad at me. It's how it comes out. I love you. Let it come out. We love you too, We do. Truth is the right. That's why we come here. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mm. Nobody, none of these preachers do this stuff on purpose. Well, maybe some of them do. Most preachers ain't missing it on purpose. They love God. They live their vote. I've been critical to them. We're praying for the preachers in this region. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like, get your heart yes, right, dude. Yes, you ain't got it. I ain't got everything right. Yes, Thank you, Help Jesus. Us. Help us, man. Jesus. Man, can you imagine misdiagnosing a patient? Then you cause physical harm to them? Can you imagine leading people's souls? And you believe it was real. Mm. Then you learn about what people are going to think about. Even though God told you what to do, you scared of man. Yeah, I don't want that to be my testimony. They were revered when they were physical beings. They were worshipped as God. They still want to be worshipped today. If you look up the word lust of the flesh, you already have in the book of Galatians, and you click on it, it's going to tell you. A band of frolics and men who in the nighttime hours in a drunken state did worship and glory to Bacchus. Bacchus had a name. Uh oh. Amen. See, we're talking about individual spirits right now, but you go on. You go on. You do whatever you think is right. <clears throat> but I want you to imagine a mosquito sprayer running through your neighborhood because that's a Mardi Gras parade spraying out these. <coughs> you know what you want with that? Yeah. Right. This stuff been around since the Roman Empire. Come on now. Right. Say it. You can still go because you've got a free will. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the devil wants. He wants mm -hmm. your will. Yeah. He wants your mind. Yeah. He wants to affect your emotions. Yeah. He wants to start off at your soul. Yeah. And he wants to drive his <coughs> into your spirit. Come on now. And he wants to steal your life force. Mm -hmm. And he wants to steal your friend's life force. He wants you to go to hell. He wants your friends to go to hell. And he can't make you go to hell. Let's just say for a second you're saved in this place. You know what he wants to do? He wants to get you caught up in your video games. He wants to get you caught up in Netflix. He wants to get you caught up in, I don't know, Housewives of America or The uh, Bachelor or uh, Yellowstone. Oh, That's Yellowstone. Right. All the way. Who that girl was being possessed. You don't need to watch that show. There you go. Oh, how do you know? You don't need to watch that show. <laughs> oh, bless Go God. on. Bless God. Let it in. It's yeah. the word. Mm. Go on. Let it in. You said pray to come right. Right. Go on. Let it in. Bring yourself to your personal little demon sprayer. Mm. Yeah, oh, Lord. Okay, let me be careful. I don't want to get all like that. All right. Man. Bacchus, the mosquito sprayer, releasing demons, right? But what about when they attach to the individual spirits of lust that want attention? Spirits of addiction that want attention. They will leave you alone for a little while. Some are stronger than others. They don't hide as much. They don't hide as much. They top up their heads every few hours. The human vessel is saying, I need a fix. And the demon spirit is saying, I need some attention over here. <laughs> they will worship. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Demonic spirits in physical bodies in the days of old had names like Hercules, Bacchus. Yes, I, I, I think that's fake it. mythology. I'm telling you right now, it's not, my friend. Horus and Osiris and Isis, the false gods of Egypt, they produced their own offspring upon the earth that dwelled in physical bodies. And when Goliath died, his spirit was released. That's right. I wrote a poem on time. I meant to get to try to find a poem. I don't remember what it said. It says something like, For how long shall the swallow flit or springtime air? Or 
or, or the heart of man, it's something about springtime air so crisp, the heart of man desires to soar, but there comes a day when it will soar no more. So as Jane Eyre at one time pondered, whoever that is, I've got to read some literature. As Jane Eyre at one time pondered, I too feel that need. Whither will that spirit flit when at length released? Where's that spirit going to go? The human spirit, but what about the demonic spirit that's released and it's looking for a body? That's you know? right. Because it wants to do its work. It wants to do work in the president. Yep. It wants to do work in the senator. It wants to do work in the school children. It wants to do work in your heart. It wants to do Amen. work in this. You know what I'm saying? And he'll take whatever he can get. Right? right? Yep. He'll take whatever he can get. He'll only give a little bit. Okay, fine. But he's going to keep trying to drive. Will he not keep trying to drive? Yes, he yes. will. He's like water up against the dam, waiting for a crack. Mm -hmm. He never stops. No. He never stops, but you never stop. You never stop working. Hey. The Holy Spirit never, never stops. stops. He never, never stops stop working. working. The Holy Spirit moving through the blood of the eternal land has given us victory. Not just that they want to be worshipped, but now that we're saved, Satan wants to prevent us from being effective for the kingdom, so he wants to oppress us. Right. Mm -hmm. I probably won't preach again like this for maybe a while, maybe. But look, every time we allow the enemy to have his way with us and we get him to move us away from the truth, we just being deeper in this mess. The scripture says the angels of God appeared through heaven, right? But look, this world was created for Adam. They don't have control until we do. That's right. This world still belongs to God in Christ. He won it back. Hallelujah. There's there a great battle that's taking place for the souls of men, but Jesus has already won the battle. And he's given us the authority to operate Amen. under Amen. his authority. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and it's just a down payment, my friend. This is just a down payment. Hallelujah. It's about to get real. I believe that. No, look, we're going to receive the full redemption whenever the Lord comes back from his church, but he's going to keep pointing. Listen, you imagine that if the church happens to be here, look, you may not agree with me on time, and that's fine. You, you talk your time, and I'll talk about the time I have to be the pastor. I'm not going to say it real loud, but I'm going to say it a little bit right now. I'm going to say this. If the Lord, in his word, has showed us that it's not the timing is not going to go down like we expected, you think for one second, if he poured out his spirit on the day of Pentecost, that we ain't going to see something even bigger and new. Amen. Right. How do you think the church was started? Have you done any research on church history, my friend? Let me ask you a question. Have you done research on church history. Do you understand that it was the martyr's blood that was the watering of the seed of the gospel that allowed the mighty Roman Empire to bow its knees under the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
You think Marty's blood hadn't been spilled through the years? Come on. Hey, preach. Let me just say it. Okay, first Adam, last Adam, right? Fallen angels deceive God's earthly creation into disobeying God and obeying them, which resulted in God's creation having a sinful nature. Then they took it a step further. Somehow they commingled with the daughters of men, right? We've already talked about that in his word. He teaches me that there are evil spirits. That his word teaches me that, Christian, that there are evil spirits that want to destroy me. In his word, he teaches me that Jesus defeated them and that when I'm in Christ, Jesus' victory over evil flows through me on earth. We have authority over evil in Christ. Aren't you excited about yes. that? Good. Yeah. Because Jesus said you're more excited that your name is written Amen. in the Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You like that one, Mike? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tell the truth, right? Now. Obviously, God does not want evil spirits attached to his people because then his people will be moonlighting for them. When we're supposed to be working for Jesus. When we're supposed to be working for him. Amen? Protect me. I don't want to cause God's people to stumble. Amen. At this point, uh, Music, singers, musicians, come forward. We're going to talk more. Look, Tuesday night, if you want to be here, I'll be here. 6.30, we'll have a little preamble to Wednesday night's message. I want you to be able to understand these things so you can ask. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Anything that I might have missed? Anything that popped in your mind? Anything that you want to ask a question about before we transition into service? No? Uh, there's a question that's always, it always comes up. No matter what, it always comes up. I'll stand up. They'll hear me. But, yeah, but I want to go. There's a question that always comes up. No matter who I talk to, no matter who I teach, no matter what. Oh, God got my back. Oh, I'm okay with God. Me and him got the same. Ain't no same. The hell the same. I tell them, I said, hell is not your biggest problem. The lake of fire is your biggest problem. It's the end result of a person that thinks they got a thing with God. So, my question is, and it's one that everybody's heard, but I want it on tape so that I can play it to whoever needs to hear it. You said that hell is, or, or belly car is made for uh, Satan and his cohorts. And it's not made for Christians, it's not made for anybody. Any human being, mankind, uh, has a get out of hell car bound to need. But if they don't live it, and all this vaccine and, and uh, all this comes up, Can they, oh, I'm in God's hands. See, I can, I'm good, I'm in God's hands. Can a Christian lose their salvation? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Can you elaborate just a little bit? Yeah, look at elaborate on that. This is my take on that. Sure. And this is my opinion based on study of the scripture. You may agree, you may not agree. Lauren Larson taught me a long time ago that faith brought me in and and I believe that it will also have to be a destruction of faith that brings me out. Yeah. I do not believe that losing your salvation is as easy as Sister Till used to say. God bless her. I yeah. love that woman. I'm so grateful yes. for that woman's ministry. Yeah. But she would tell you that if you miss church on a Wednesday night, <laughs> you can miss the right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but go ahead and miss. 300 or however many Wednesday nights there are in a year and see what it does. Right, right. Go ahead and open up the door. Go ahead and keep living your life in a way that's different. You're not feeding your spirit. See, you ever been to Lake Florida early, early in the morning when you go to jog and pray? I got to put in that sight tree over there by the lake one time early, early in the morning, long before it was looking at the last day. And those little small waves were lapping on that little beach at the lake. Yep. I felt like the Lord was showing me. And, and, that, and one moment, my mom was telling me one time, I'll share this with the Lord, let me just give you this illustration. <coughs> we're driving down the road to go see my sister, Linda, and so we're having to fill in that whole area with 
the sand that they filled in by late one more time to the judges stand and where the trees are heading into my pavilion towers that y'all may not remember, but they filled all that in the sand. And then one day I was driving down the road, me and my mom were going. And uh, we were going to see my sister, or maybe it was before, maybe we were going to see her grave. I don't know. It was at a time after the Lord got hold of it. And I saw this stuff growing in the, in the sand. And it was, it was, they had planted uh, some type of grass or something. And I said, Mom, what you think that is? Because she loves plants and stuff like that. And she loves the clouds and she loves the sky. She loves creation. Right? I said, Mom, what you think that is? She said, I don't know, Matthew. Maybe they're trying to build an intricate root system. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm on top of that. An intricate root system. Yeah. Well, why would they do that, I wonder? I didn't ask for that, maybe. Maybe I thought about it for about two or three days. Why would you build an intricate root system within Sand and dirt that you had filled in because probably you don't want it to wash away. Yeah. You're trying to prevent erosion, my dear. Sin acts like waves on the shore of our heart. Yeah. It's good. Slowly wrapping and taking with it the foundation that is Christ. The foundation that is protecting the root of the gospel that has been planted in our heart. Slowly with time we let it get in deeper and deeper until one day we're not safe. I don't know that it happens. I just know it can't happen. The same faith that brought me in is the same faith that keeps me. The only way I won't be in is if that faith is destroyed. When the faith is destroyed, when the vessel no longer belongs to God that's above my pain. I am not the Holy Spirit. I just know how you get saved and I know how you stay saved. And I don't want to be like the people at the judgment seat of Christ. They get their works burned up and they still make it in. <laughs> the back of their 